Well, welcome once again. We are excited that you're here with us for this live stream. We're going to be taking a look in the book of Luke chapter 8 today. And it's interesting here is that Jesus is before a large crowd and he starts to talk about something that is so spiritual. He talks about farming and that's why I've come to this field today is to have this kind of background as we talk about the parable of the sower. And so we're going to take a look in um, Luke chapter 8 verses 4. It says, well, a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town. He told this parable, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it, choked the plants. So other seed fell on good soil, came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. When he had said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. And so he has a huge crowd here coming to hear him speak. And he talks about farming methods, about different soils that you throw your seed. And he talks about how this sower goes out and he just starts throwing seed everywhere. And that shows us that the gospel is for everyone. The good news is for everyone. It's not just for a limited amount of people, but it's for everyone. And that we are to scatter the word of God everywhere. But he also shares that there are different types of soil. There's different types of people, our hearts, and how we receive the word. And uh, the other week, my son and I, we were out at the library checking out some books, and we noticed that they also had this seed library that you could, could pick different seeds out. And so we went and chose a couple seeds, and right away he said, when I get home, we're going to plant the seed. And I said, well, you can't plant the seed yet because the conditions are not right. If you plant the seed now, it will die and you just waste the seed. I said, you have to read the directions and you have to wait for the right conditions. And here Jesus is talking about the conditions of our heart, where it's not just the weather conditions, but he's talking about the conditions of the soil. And the first condition he talks about is the path, is that he says the sower went out and he just spread seed everywhere and some fell along a rocky path. And he said that right away when the interpretation came, the disciples asked him about the interpretation. He said, this is what it means, is when it falls along the path, it means that the devil comes and he just snatches it. It never has time to go deep into the soil. In that path, it just gets trampled on and the word of God doesn't last. It's for those that hear the word, but they never allow the word of God to penetrate their heart. And then he went on to talk about the rocky soil. And he talks about how the rocky soil, how some fell on rocky soil. Now, every type of ground that you go to plant seed in will have rock in it. It doesn't matter how good that soil looks like, there's rocks in it. And we know that, you know, things can grow in rocky soil. They can grow in rocky soil. Jesus isn't saying that, you know, if your heart it has some hard places or your lifestyle has some difficult areas in it, that nothing can grow in it. But he talked about is that this seed in particular didn't grow because there was no moisture. And that really caught me and I thought about no moisture is that I've been hiking in places, Sonia and I, and in the midst of cliffs, you'll see trees growing out. It looks impossible. How can trees grow in rocky places? But they do because they have moisture. Somehow rain gets in there. And we know that moisture, the rain, it comes from the Holy Spirit, is that we allow the Holy Spirit to soften our heart. And so you could have rocky places. You could have places in your life that are not right with the Lord yet. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to come and to start to work in your heart, to start to soften your heart, allow that moisture to come, allow him to come and work. We know that Jesus didn't pick the disciples that looked the holiest. He didn't pick the ones that had their life together. Is that he picked those that were willing to allow him to speak into their life. And that's what Jesus is talking about, is those that have rocky ground, is that it dried up because there was no moisture. And when we don't allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life, that's what we're doing. We're allowing the Word of God to dry up and it can't take root and it will wither. It will never produce a harvest in our life. And the third group he talks about is those that come up with thorny. And he talks about the pleasures of life, you know, the riches. He talks about that, you know, we get drawn away by the things of this world. And it's important that he points out is that there are pleasures in this world. It doesn't mean that the things are not pleasurable is that there are things that will try to draw us away, but we need to recognize that when we do, those things will eventually choke out our faith. Even if we go to church, even if you tune in every week to C365, if you allow those things to remain in your life, eventually it will choke the Word of God out. And the fourth group he talks about 
is that those that have a good heart, noble heart. He talks about those that it doesn't mean your life is perfect, but you have an honest heart when it comes to things of God. And sometimes when we hear the word of God, we, we can have almost all different types of reactions to the word of God. We can have this rocky soil where we can say, you know, God, I don't really want you to work. I'm not going to allow the conviction of the Lord in. We can have that path where we're like, God, I don't want the, your word to penetrate my heart today. But he talks about the noble heart, the good heart. It doesn't mean our life is perfect, but we are honest and we allow the word of God to work in our life. We allow the word of God to penetrate our life. And it says that those that do this will produce a harvest. It will produce a harvest much more than what was sown, a hundred times what was sown in our life. And so are we allowing the word of God to go deep in our life? Are we allowing the word of God to penetrate our heart? Sometimes we approach the word of God and we just, we don't really want God to speak to us. And when we do this, we need to be honest and saying, you know what? The word of God is not going to have an effect in our life. It's not going to take root in our life unless we allow the word God to penetrate down, the Holy Spirit to work in our heart. And Jesus was concerned about this, is that in the midst of a large crowd, and I've been at conferences before where there are large crowds, some people have paid big money to go to the conference, but they're hanging out at the book table. They're going and getting a coffee. They're not paying attention at all. And Jesus had all sorts of people coming and listening. Some were just passing by. And he says here that, be careful. He shared this parable so that people would think about their heart, is where is their heart at? And I want us to ask ourselves this question today, be honest today, is where is our heart at? Is are we allowing the word of God to penetrate deep into our heart? And if you will, God will produce a harvest in your life. It doesn't mean that your life is perfect, but the Holy Spirit will begin to work on you little by little. And so I want to challenge you today is that Jesus, Jesus was challenging those that we're hearing today, is that let us have a heart that receives the word of God. And it's by receiving the word of God that we will produce a harvest. And so let's pray today. God, I pray today, Lord, that you would move in our heart, Lord. I pray today, God, Lord, that you would take root in our life today. And Lord, that you would change us, Lord, that you would move in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.